The seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. The seven seals in Revelation introduce us to the characters of the tribulation, the four horses, their riders, and what they've been armed with, the martyrs, the day of the Lord, and the shift from warning to action. While the seals reveal terrible forces, we can take comfort in that it is the Lamb who opens each of the seals, a reminder that in and through the tribulation, God is in control. The plagues and the days of the Antichrist are limited to only what God has preordained and will allow. Also, the seals are not the scroll itself. The seals only keep the scroll closed. Only the Lamb of God is worthy to open the scroll, and nobody knows what's written on it. However, the scroll is far more important than the seals. Once the seventh seal is broken and the scroll is open, we are immediately introduced to the seven trumpets. But before we continue, let's take a closer look at each seal. The first seal reveals a white horseman, symbolizing deception. When the first seal is open, John sees a white horse. A white horse represents a conquering king or king returning victoriously from conquest. The rider on this white horse is a conqueror bent on conquering or determined to conquer. He has a bow in his hand, but there's no mention of any arrows, possibly letting us know that there's a lack of real power or strength to complete his mission. The rider of the white horse is believed to be the Antichrist, followed by war, famine, and death. He comes to conquer Israel and the world. Part of his scheme is to imitate Jesus Christ and to mislead or deceive as many as possible. He will accomplish much until he comes face to face with the King of Kings, the real conqueror. The second seal reveals a red horseman, symbolizing war. A fiery red horse appears and the rider is given a large sword and the power or authority to take peace from the earth through the act of war. Death of many is the result of this horse and its rider. War has been a horrible curse on the earth through the ages, but its horror will multiply with this horse and its rider. The third seal reveals the black horseman, symbolizing famine. We see a black horse, which indicates an evil omen. Its rider has a scale in his hand, not the scale of judgment, but a scale for weighing, and the indication is that a day's wage will only buy a small measure of wheat and barley, simple foods. Famine will come as a result, and many will die of hunger. The fourth seal reveals a pale horseman, symbolizing pestilence or an epidemic. One quarter of all mankind dies. A pale or sickly-looking horse appears, symbolizing death by pestilence or plagues. The rider of this pale horse is death itself, and the horrible idea that hell or Hades follows him paints a terrorizing picture for all mankind of this time. The plague is so horrible that one-fourth, or about seven billion people, will die, or more than one and a half billion people. The fifth seal reveals the cry of the martyrs in heaven, symbolizing martyrdom and the Great Tribulation. The martyrs under the altar are in a place of rest and waiting. They cry out because they have given their lives, died for the cause of the name of the Lord. They cry out for justice for the wrongs committed against them. They died untimely in unjust deaths in the service of ministry or while resisting the mark of the beast. And still they have to wait for the process to complete as others are yet to die for the cause. The sixth seal reveals the day of the Lord, symbolizing heavenly signs. The breaking of this seal causes a great earthquake. The whole earth is affected as the sun becomes dark and the moon turns red as blood. The stars in the sky fall to the earth as if being blown away by a strong wind. The heavens, the mountains, and the islands are withdrawn from their place. Men and women of all classes, the rich and the poor, the mighty and the weak, run and hide in the rubble and cry out in fear of the wrath of God. The seventh seal introduces the seven trumpets, symbolizing a shift of attention from heaven to earth. At the opening of the seventh seal, silence comes over the heavens for about a half an hour. Throughout the breaking of the seals, the characters and signs have been introduced, but no action has taken place yet. The breaking of the seventh seal reveals that a shift is taking place. The Lamb is about to open the scroll, and God's judgment is about to pour out on the earth. Once all the seals have been broken, the Lamb of God then proceeds to open the scroll, thus introducing us to the seven trumpets given to the seven angels, and we are given a vision of yet another angel with a golden censer. This angel stood at the altar and was given much incense to offer together with the prayers of God's people on the golden altar before the throne. 
The smoke of the incense blends together with the prayers of God's people and rises up as a fragrance before God from the angel's hand. The angel then moves to action, taking the censer, filling it with fire from the altar, and launching it down onto the earth, which results in roars of thunder and rumbling, flashes of lightning and earthquake, symbolizing that in his time God answers the cries of justice for his people. The sound of the trumpets follows the prayers of God's people. Let's take a closer look at the trumpets. The sound of the first trumpet affects the land. At the sound of the first trumpet, God's wrath is moved into action. Hail and fire mixed with blood is launched down to the land, burning all the green grass, a third of the earth, and its trees. The sound of the second trumpet affects the seas. Something that appeared like a huge mountain set of fire is thrusted into the seas, turning a third of the sea into blood, destroying a third of the ships, and killing a third of the animals within the waters. The sound of the third trumpet affects the rivers and the springs. A great star by the name of Wormwood falls from the sky, blazing like a torch into a third of the rivers and springs of water. The waters affected turn bitter, killing many in the surrounding areas. The sound of the fourth trumpet affects the skies. A third of the sun, the moon, and the stars are immediately struck, turning them into complete darkness, leaving the day and night without a third of its light. The sound of the fifth trumpet affects the health of the unbeliever and releases some of the beast's military strength. A fallen star is given the key to the abyss, and a massive amount of smoke arises as from a fiery furnace, darkening the sun and the sky. From within the smoke appear locusts that have been given power similar to that of scorpions. They are instructed not to bring harm upon any grass, plant, or tree, but are given permission to torment all the people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, causing them to suffer the agony of the sting of scorpions for up to five months. In these days people will wish for death, but death will escape them. The sound of the sixth trumpet affects the lives of unbelievers. A voice comes from the four horns on the golden altar that is before God, instructing the angel who sounded the trumpet to release the four angels that have been held at the great Euphrates River. These angels have been prepared for this moment to be released to kill a third of all mankind. The sound of the seventh trumpet announces the final victory. At the sound of the seventh trumpet, we have the opposite response than we had at the breaking of the seventh seal. Where the breaking of the seventh seal brought silence, the sound of the seventh trumpet brings about shouts of declaration, loud voices in heaven proclaiming, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. While the trumpet plagues will cause some to repent before God, still many others will refuse and continue in their sinfulness. As the opportunity to repent nears its end, just as the plagues in Egypt in the book of Exodus hardened Pharaoh's heart, the plagues in the book of Revelation will also harden the hearts of many, as quoted from Revelation and Daniel, Faith in Action series. Sin deceives people into waiting to repent. Then, as they delay, sin hardens them so that they do not want to repent. Sin hardens the hearts of sinners like the sun turns clay into bricks. In the day of judgment, no one can escape God's judgment, but God's judgment is always just. Those who overcome the beasts in the time of tribulation and come to repentance before God will sing and rejoice with harps given to them by God himself. Those who refuse will reap the eternal consequences of their choice. The plagues of the seven trumpets and the seven bulls present the final opportunity to come to repentance, and the plagues of the bulls bring the completion of God's wrath upon the earth and mankind. Let's take a closer look at each of the seven bowls. The pouring of the first bowl, affliction upon those with the mark of the beast. As the angel pours the first bowl upon the land, the results are unsightly and festering sores on the bodies of those who worship and receive the mark of the beast. The pouring of the second bowl, the seas turn to blood. The second bowl lands directly in the seas. The waters turn into blood with the stench of death, killing all of the living animals within it. The pouring of the third bowl, the rivers and springs turn to blood. The third bowl is directed to the rivers and springs of water, turning them to blood. The voice of the angel proclaims, You are just in these judgments, O Holy One, you who are and who were. For they have shed the blood of your holy people and your prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve, which received a confirming response from the altar. Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The pouring of the fourth bowl. The sun burns with scorching heat. 
The fourth bowl is poured down onto the sun, allowing it to blaze fiercely, scorching people with fire. Their bodies become parched and dehydrated, yet they curse the name of God rather than acknowledging their sins and coming to repentance. The pouring of the fifth bowl, affliction to the beast and its government. The fifth bowl flows over the throne of the beast, submerging the entire kingdom into darkness. The people anguish in their distress and continue cursing God because of their troubles and afflictions, refusing to come to repentance before the Lord. The pouring of the sixth bowl, the Euphrates River dries up in preparation for Armageddon. The sixth bowl is poured directly into the Euphrates River, causing it to dry up completely. Demonic spirits flow out of the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. These spirits are on a mission, performing signs and gathering kings and armies from around the world at Armageddon for the great battle on the day of the Lord. The pouring of the seventh bowl. The earth is completely shaken. The seventh bowl is poured into the air, and a loud voice comes from the throne in the temple saying, It is done. Flashes of lightning, rumbling thunder, and an earthquake greater than any earthquake of all time devastate the earth, delivering a cup filled with the fury of God's wrath to Babylon tearing the great city into three parts. Hundred-pound hailstones fall from the skies. Islands and mountains are completely washed away and destroyed, bringing complete ruin to the people, the cities, and the nations. Yet the people continue to curse God for the great devastation upon the land. In closing, while some of the judgments among the trumpets and the bulls reflect similarities, the judgments increase in severity as they progress. The seals introduce us to what will take place in the future, the trumpets bring judgment into action, and the bulls complete the outpouring of the wrath of God. The plagues of the trumpet and the bulls provide an opportunity for sinners to come to repentance. The timeline has been set in place by God, and He has forewarned us about these judgments before they come so that we could avoid having to face them. As a final closing statement, I would like to quote the book Revelation and Daniel, Faith in Action series. God has put many roadblocks on the way to hell. Sinners must get past praying mothers and fathers. They must go around churches. They must ignore the testimonies of those who love Jesus. They must refuse to look up to the one who sends every good gift. And they must refuse to repent when God allows them to taste the judgments of hell. For those who refuse every effort that God makes to save them, only one thing remains. Those who smash through every roadblock will one day come to the lake of fire at the end of the road. Despite the many forewarnings regarding the judgments and the wrath of God throughout the book of Revelation, God continuously reminds His people to look up and to the future, to the final victory that He has prepared for all those who overcome, to all who repent, and to all who call upon the name of the Lord for salvation.